Transformers digital event here at Bluefin. My name is David Clark, brand manager at Bluefin. Uh, I'm here with the other David, David Edmondson, and also here with some very special friends from IDW. So uh, starting with Anna, let's go down the line and just, uh, you know, say hi to the fans and say who you are. <laughs> Hello, my name is Anna Malkova, and I'm the artist for the current IDW Transformers series. And I've been working on the series since last year, and I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> And nice to meet you all. Hi, I'm John Barber. I'm the editor in chief at IDW and a uh, longtime Transformers writer uh, as well. Hey, I'm David Marriott, uh, the third David in the group. Uh, I'm the Transformers editor at IDW and a co writer of Transformers versus the Terminator. Awesome. Thank you, guys. There can never be too many Davids. I mean, three Davids is good. I mean, five Davids is better, but, you know, we're definitely happy uh, yeah. for John and Anne to be we, here. We have room for at least five more Davids on the stream. I think, I think we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so before we get started, I just wanted to, you know, remind everybody that we bring this up. Well, oh, that's just me. Here we go. <laughs> really big. <laughs> yeah. So we, we do have our, our, our Flame Toys Transformer sale going on right now. Um, some of them are on sale, like Shattered Glass Drift, uh, Thundercracker, and Bumblebee. Um, they're really, really running out. So, you know, if you're at all interested in them, make sure you pick it up. Uh, of course, we also have our IDW Megatron. Uh, we have our G1 Optimus. And uh, in case you missed out, I think we literally have like one or two of the current car carry Optimuses left. So, <laughs> you know, do, do not sleep on that one, guys. <laughs> and then we also. Uh, thanks to our friends at IDW, uh, we do have a really cool thing for you guys. If you uh, you know go to their uh, website and buy any of their books, uh, we do have a code Galvatron, where you'll get a thirty percent discount. Uh, it's, it's active for this whole week, all week till Sunday. So you know, this is a good good chance to stock up on some Transformers comic books. And let's be honest, you know we're we're not going anywhere, guys. We're going to be inside for a long time. Buy some books. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thank you guys for that. And uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and get started. So, uh, of course, the question I have to ask everybody first on the Transformers panel is, who is your favorite Transformer? Uh, for me, Ironhide. I know he doesn't really get a lot of play with a lot of people. He's not, he doesn't carry a magical box in his chest. And he's not a leader. But his name sounds really cool. <laughs> so, okay, great. I'll start with, uh, start with you, David, and then we'll just go down the line. Nice. So I'm a hardcore Decepticon guy. I love all things Decepticon. Uh, growing up as a kid watching you know, Transformers when it aired on TV, uh, I fell in love with Starscream for whatever reason. He's a weasel. He's like always whining. Uh, but I love Starscream. I also adore Grimlock and Optimus Prime. You, you can't go wrong with that. But uh, Decepticon <laughs> through and through, which is what makes the IDW... Autobot version Megatron just just pained me a little bit, but uh, but I can definitely appreciate that like that's something I never saw, thought I'd see, and I'm excited to see it. Uh, well, um, for me personally, like uh, I like a lot of characters. Like uh, every continuity brings uh, somebody I absolutely fall in love with. So starting from G1, it's been Jazz uh, and Grimlock, my absolute favorites. And Beast Wars, it's Beast Wars, uh, it's Megatron, because he's just having such an amazing, splendid time. She's, she's just having like legit fun. And in the uh, previous IDW run, um, I absolutely fell in love with uh, that depiction of Elita. Uh, Marvel Scott brought an absolute beast out of her. <laughs> And right now, uh, with our current run, I think it's, of course, Flame War. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our little uh, child with Ryan, she, she's an absolute goblin, and she's having lots of fun in the book. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, for me, it's it's always been Skids and Mudflap uh, from the second movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I tried uh, to buy them the uh, other day. They go no, for a fortune uh, on eBay. <laughs> Uh, um, no, I'm joking. Uh, Prowl, Prowl was the first Transformer I bought, and I, I love the character. And uh, I, yeah, I read the comics and stuff. And I, I honestly was an adult working on Transformers before I realized Prowl wasn't one of the main characters in the cartoon. You know, because somehow every time I watched the cartoon, I just edited it into being like him being one of the main characters. 
um, then working on Transformers for me it was a uh, uh, RC like that was a character that I, I think I, I really uh, like I don't know like fe fell into or fit it, like identified with the most and she was really sort of I don't know if it's I don't know how she, she was sort of the through line through the whole run of, of the stuff I wrote in in, um, in IDW um, but I, you know there's a lot of characters yeah. I like. Uh, and uh, including this little character, this little goblin here, who's uh, <laughs> is, is, is running around handing me uh, oh. endless, endless set of toys here. I'm like, Dad, why aren't we playing right now? Yeah. Is this play time? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's okay. funny that you mentioned Prowl was your favorite, your your first Transformer you got. It was my first Transformer, and almost everyone I know that was their first Transformer. If you got Transformers in the '80s, and I don't know if it was like parents just felt comfortable getting the police car for their kids or something like that, but. Prowl is so many people's first Transformer uh, of my generation. I, don't, you know, I, I honestly, I, to me, there, there's almost, I don't know if this is, I hadn't really thought about this in a long time, but I, I, I kind of thought that if you were picking up, like, uh, who else, Blue Streak or um, who else? Smoke screen? Smoke, Smoke, Smoke screen? Yep. Okay, yeah. You got something extra with Prowl because he had the sirens on top. You mm -hmm. know? It, was like, it was like you got a little extra free. So I think that might have been the thing that put me over the edge. I'm like, oh, there's, there's more. <laughs> added value. <laughs> yes. Um, I know I've gone on the record before as saying that I think my all-time favorite Transformers character is the minor Japanese Beast Wars character, Randy, because I love that he just has a dude's name. Like, you know, you got Megatron, Starscream, Grimlock, Optimus Prime, and Randy. Um, but, you I mean, know, he sticks out. <laughs> yeah, right. But, you know, uh, again, I feel much the same as Anna and I think everyone on the panel in saying that each generation brings a new favorite character. Each run brings a new favorite character. I have a lot of love for RC, uh, specifically because of John's run. I have a lot of love for Flame War because she is a perfect little goblin. Um, Cup and Springer always hold a special place in my heart. So, yeah. Awesome. Right. We got a lot of people in the chat throwing out their favorites. You know, uh, got a couple more votes for Starscream. Good, good, good. Uh, one uh, Soundwave, uh, Soundwave TFP uh, says, uh, "Who's your favorite Decepticon? Why is it Soundwave? Can't imagine why he chose that." Um, we got a uh, Soundwave shockwave. favorite. <laughs> we got some he Shockwave. Can't him. He, he gets the job done. <laughs> yeah. I uh, got obviously some Optimus, Optimus. Uh, shout out to Justin uh, on our <laughs> team who desperately wants Optimus to be a thing. So uh, if you're looking for any you guys side stories in Beast Wars, he says Perfect. that's yours for free. Optimus, <laughs> you, you missed the opportunity in the Beast Wars continuity. Board. He shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been a girl. It should have been a moose. <laughs> um, and then yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of echoing for RC too. Uh, you know, RC was a beloved character. I remember, you know, as as a child, she was my first introduction to. Oh, the Autobots have genders, <laughs> and, uh, and I, I love that she was just such a strong character. So, uh, and then Bumblebee as well. So, nice. thanks everyone, and everyone in the chat. You know, uh, if you have any questions, you know, we have you know the amazing talents of people from IDW on. So, if you have any questions about anything having to do with you know the comics uh, or just Transformers in general, just let us know. Uh, there may be a prize involved. You know, some of these bad boys may go home with someone in the comments section. So, uh, you'll know, be mm -hmm. active and let us know what you think in the comments. Awesome. Yeah, and please, please, please try and get Optimus somewhere in the comics so that Justin can leave me alone about that. <laughs> <laughs> every day. I know, every day. Oh, man. We don't um, even say Optimus Prime at work because anytime we say Optimus, he's like, Optimus? So it's just Prime. <laughs> just Prime, yeah. Um, is, there, is there one where they, instead of like crashing in like Oregon or something, they crash in Canada? And, like, <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, yeah. ma make his dream come true. I beg of you. Even if it's just Canadian Beast Wars, like true yeah. Canadian. <laughs> awesome. Now, so uh, you know when when was it that you guys first came to love Transformers? You know, for me, when I was a kid, I remember watching uh, the Beast Wars uh, mm -hmm. cartoon. I remember, like the, the first Transformer I ever bought actually was the the Optimus uh, Primal one, where he's like kind of like really shiny and his feet turned into like a snowboard kind of thing. The transmetal one. Yeah. yeah. The trans yeah. Metal, so for me, that was like the coolest thing I ever had. I was like, "Yo, he's shiny. He's got a snowboard," which in my head was like a flying thing. I did all kinds of stuff with. Yeah. And so you know, like that's how I came into Transformers. How, how did you guys come to it? Start with you, David. I mean, I was. 
I was I was a kid of the '80s, and you know, Transformers, GI <laughs> Joe, Voltron, you know, those things came on my TV, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> I looked at all the all cars and jets around me differently, uh, and every I had a, my eighth grade birthday was I had an op, my mom made me an Optimus Prime cake, and I got all these cool Transformers, and I instantly lost like half of them, and I was so sad. <laughs> but um, yeah, trans it just always has been around me. You know, it was so huge in the '80s, and I loved you know its resurgence in you know the early 2000s. Um, you know, when, you know, the comics started coming out, you know, and then obviously we got like the Bay films and stuff like that. And now there's just so much Transformers and it's just a great time to be a Transformers fans. You know, there's tons of toys, collectibles, you know, comics, uh, movies, even video games. And, uh, I'm here for it all. Uh, well, first of all, I am baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I am slightly older than David here, the, <laughs> the third one, <laughs> but still, um, uh the first time i was actually aware that transformers were a thing when uh transformers animated started airing and coincidentally it was ported to russian national television uh, so it had dubs and that was the first time i actually saw transformers and a little bit later after that um the movie came out uh, and i was still like okay i guess uh, transformers uh, transforming robots are a thing but at some point, a friend of mine who was very into comics uh, shoved a copy of Wreckers into my face and said, like, read this. This is good science fiction. This is, like, what a perfect uh, comic book is supposed to be. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it is. And so an actual point of me getting hardcore into Transformers was with IDW, because ever since I read uh, Last Stand of the Wreckers, I've read every Transformers comic that was out there and ever since the 80s. Uh, UK, US, uh, literally everything that ever came out. Okay. And I absolutely fell in love with that. <laughs> and well, the rest, the, the toys and uh, the movies and everything else is like, I know, yeah, it's there, but like the comics are my true love. <laughs> nice. Uh, sorry, sorry for to unmute. Um, yeah, for for me, uh, uh, I, I don't know. Just for I pretend to be younger than I am. Uh, no, I, like I was, I was actually buying the um, the Diacron, the, the Diacron toys when they were coming out in America. Um, which I think Takara was just releasing them, and you used to have like toy stores and malls that you could just go into, and they'd have like these sort of weird toys you didn't hear about other places. And my friend Steve Petrazic uh, had the uh it was the red version of sunstreaker and like that was the you know, like that was awesome and it was actually the first one I, I bought and i used to tell that story in, in in like interviews i hadn't talked to him since um second grade but he reached out and he he uh uh he, he found me on, on on twitter like he saw his name in an interview somewhere uh, so I, I reconnected with my kindergarten best friend over that um but so i was when like actual transformers were coming out like i was pretty excited because i had you know like i'd already seen some of that stuff i was pretty into the transforming uh uh you know toys um, so I actually, I picked up Transformers number one um, on the day it came out in the, in the comic books, which according to the wiki was actually on my birthday, um, but you know, I probably didn't pick it up on the day it came out. Uh, and then I, you know, I remember being excited when the, car when the cartoon was out. You know, I remember I pro getting Prowl. I actually got Prowl and Cliff Jumper. Uh, my grandma got him for me at a, a Toys R Us in, uh, uh, in Torrance. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've been kind of in there you know, from the beginning and it's always been something that could sort of floated around on the like, you know, per periphery of things. Like I, 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 you know, I went and saw the movie when it came out and I, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't exactly follow everything, but like when the, when Dreamwave got the comics, I picked up the first one. I, it wasn't super, it, it was, it was cool looking, it, you know, it was neat, but it, you know, it, was, it didn't, it didn't, um, it didn't really change my life. But not long after that, I was in, uh, I was in the UK at that point, uh, um, and a friend of mine, um, was telling me about the Simon Furman Transformers comics, which I'd never, I'd never read. Like I read the Trans Transformers comic, but I kind of stopped reading it when um, Bob Budiansky was still writing it. And um, which is, you know, I mean, there's some issues of that that you know, like the, the smelting pool and stuff that I absolutely love. But then um, uh, you know, he, he was kind of describing this the Simon, you know, the Simon Furman stuff, which sounded like two kids in the UK what Larry Hama G.I. Joe was to kids my age in America, which was like the sort of thing that introduced you to the medium of comics in a weird way. Uh, so I actually read some of that stuff. This is, I mean, that was an adult, you know, I, I picked up some of the Titan collections and I was just like, wow, this is amazing. If I was like, if I'd been like eight when I read this, I would have like, you know, been blown away, but it was still really fun. Um, 
that was kind of how I got into it. And uh, yeah, so it was, uh, it was, uh, then I I was working at I don't know I was working at Marvel and we were doing a uh, Transformers Avengers crossover, which uh, uh, manages to be both the uh, the worst Transformers and Avengers comic ever made. No, I'm joking. Uh, I'm joking. Two boxes. The, yeah. No, Avengers 200 is the worst Avengers comic ever made. But, yeah. Uh, um, uh, and my friend Stuart Moore wrote it. I love Stuart. He's he's absolutely fantastic. I'm just giving that comic a hard time. Um, sure. But uh, 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 that was up on a screen in some in somebody's desk. I wasn't working on it, and uh, they had two of the names flipped. Uh, like they had like Ratchet labeled Prowl and Prowl labeled Ratchet or something like that. And I was like, oh, hey, these, these are labeled wrong. And Andy Schmidt saw that. And then later on when Andy Schmidt was editing Transformers and I had left Marvel and I was going freelance, he remembered that I knew enough about Transformers to like walk by a screen and recognize that the characters were wrong. Uh, and that's kind of how I wound up working <laughs> at or being invited to pitch on Transformers. Nice. Um, I'm a lot like David Clark in that I got in on Beast Wars. Um, I'm just the right age that it was airing, like, as I was the right age to start watching cartoons and actually understanding them and then start collecting the toys. Um, so, yeah, I, I've been a hardcore Beast Wars guy my entire life. I don't have every Beast Wars toy yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, like, it's been important to me for a long time. And then as I sort of drifted away uh, in high school and college, I fell back in love with Transformers when I actually came to work at IDW and get back into the IDW comics. Um, like I had read them back when, speaking of Simon Furman, Simon was first writing the run at IDW. And then I dropped off around all hail Megatron just because honestly, I think the comics were coming out too regularly. And I didn't live near a comic store anymore, so I started like missing issues and drifted away. And then, yeah, uh, being able to sit at IDW and uh, get paid to read Transformers comics really, really brought me back into it. Nice. Love That's a nice dream. part. <laughs> dream job. Awesome. Uh, so uh, that should be a twofer, which is this only applies to, to them, David, not, not to either of us. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite Transformers book that you have worked on? Dave and I have have not worked on any Transformers books. So. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. We are open though. I'm a comic writer. David does does movies. So if you ever need anybody, we're, we're here. <laughs> so like we have too many Davids already. We don't we don't need you guys. <laughs> I would I would change my name for you guys though. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> and I would let you guys I would let you guys choose the name. <laughs> Randy, that's your new yeah. name. Done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what what do you say is your favorite book that you worked on for Transformers? <laughs> I mean, so far I worked on the on one book and it's uh, the main uh, series and I've been working on it since. Um, I think my first pages were in issue five and I became more or less regular around issue nine, ten. Yeah, something like that. Over there, and every. Usually every page uh, that I got to work on has been my favorite for exactly five seconds. <laughs> and after that, I'm like, I could have done so much better. <laughs> and so right now, um, issue 25 has been breaking and remaking me every day. And it's going to be a double issue that's, that's going to come out in uh, November. And I'm really looking forward to everybody reading it. and. Hopefully enjoying it as much as I was in pain over doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, obviously the Transformers three movie adaptation. Um, <laughs> that's the one. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Hi. Yeah. Another yeah. six of us. Arrived. <laughs> gang. Oh my gosh! Mortified. Hello, Transformers folks. Hey, uh, don't mind me. You were always here in spirit. Yeah. Absolutely. So now we have to all take back all of the bad things we said about you. And, uh, <laughs> totally justified. Totally justified. No, I was on vacation the last two weeks. I wrote down the time wrong. I, I, internet panels, I think I'm like, they're great, but I'm losing it. 
<laughs> it's like this. It's this point in the pandemic now. <laughs> it's definitely easier at an actual convention when, like, you know, someone's there. Like, shouldn't you be somewhere else right now? Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, I miss that. <laughs> so, what were we talking about? Well, 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 first, now that you're here, uh, just uh, you know, tell the folks out there who you are, what you do. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Sam Eggs. I'm a writer for some Transformers comics. I worked on Transformers Galaxies with David, uh, issues mm -hmm. seven through nine, and we uh, came up with a new Transformer, which was very exciting, called Gage, and uh, that was a real highlight for me. I've been a Transformers fan since Beasties. I've or Beast Wars, I guess, depending on what country you're from. Uh, so it was a very big moment to get to work on a franchise that I'm such a big fan of. So yeah, that's me. Nice. Uh, so we, we were in the middle of answering, uh, or you guys were in the middle of answering, what was the favorite book that you've ever worked on for Transformers? So uh, Anna had just answered. So I guess Sam, uh, you are now in the next spot, so. Oh, great. Well, <laughs> Galaxies is my first and only Transformers book. So it was a total blast. <laughs> Uh, my answer is very easy. Uh, well, no, I had to Sam. Time. You've, you've done other Transformers because. Oh, I suppose I have. I worked yeah. on Transformers My Little Pony crossover. That's true. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, it's, it's a tie, I think, between those two because creating Gage was super fun. It was it was so much fun, and to be able to work with RC and Greenlight, who are like longtime fave characters of mine, uh, and have that sort of relationship between the three of them. It's really fun to create, but also the sheer like bonkersness of uh, Transformers My Little Pony crossover it was great. And figuring out like which pony t would team up best with which Transformer was a very fun exercise. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I, I would love to see the whiteboard where it's got like the lines. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it's like that, that picture with all the like red string, and it's like yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, moose question mark? Yeah, exactly. Moose, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm really moose. looking forward to Shockwave and Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Me too. That's like. Oh my God. It's strong. There's some strong stuff in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. What about you, John? I was hoping to avoid that with my joke. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> my joke. Incidentally, if anybody's a fan of the character Buster, there's the real life one currently being fed, uh, uh, being, being fed by the boy. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's really hard. You know, I, I've been. I've actually uh, been. Uh, these aren't out yet, but we've been doing kind of a retrospective on the Transmissions podcast with myself and like Andrew Griffith, and then everybody else that's worked on our RID. You know, for hopefully dropping by. So looking back on some of those early issues, it was kind of like just remembering the sort of. Uh, I don't know, fun and innocence of uh, of first coming onto it, and that and and um, you know, I don't know, that, that that was a lot of fun. Like it's hard for me to pick because I felt like I've gotten to work. I, I, like I, I had such an, I'm so like lucky to have had such an amazing experience getting to work on the stuff and getting to work with like Andrew, getting to work with Kay Zama on Optimus, getting to work with like Livio and. Um, uh, like all these, all these artists, uh, Pr Priscilla Tramontano, these artists that I just feel like I got to work with, that I got to know really, really well, and you know that we, we, Hi. you know, it, it felt like we were just making our own comics and all that stuff, and like that's the stuff that I always remember. Um, but the one, the, you know, the one, one real standout one was the first for Robots in Disguise annual where mm. Primus showed up, and it was the uh, we had Guido Guidi doing this retro style art, and I got to like rewrite Transformers number one sort of to to fit in the. Um, uh, uh, or like, 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 kind of riff on that, uh, and, and do the old, old stuff in the style of the '80s Transformers. And then, uh, Brendan Cahill and Joanna Lafuente did the the modern day stuff. And like, Brendan's one of my uh, one of my best friends for years. I'd actually recommended him to Andy Schmidt to draw Transformers before I worked at IDW. Uh, and uh, um, the, uh, that, that was a good one. I mean, that was one that I had a lot of fun with, and I liked the switching between styles. And I, I liked that retro stuff a lot. See, the problem with being me is that I have edited all the other people on the panel. <laughs> so I can't oh. play favorites. Um, it's, like, it's like a virtual Hunger Games here. Yeah. You're going to lose two friends. I mean, if I lose anyone, whatever. No one cares if it's John, right? Like, he's just my boss. Um, <laughs> so that's fine. But no, uh, honestly, I feel like I got really lucky in when I came into Transformers Comics because I got to end all of the old run. I did the last Wrecker story. Mm. I did the last Till All or One story. I did 
the end of Optimus Prime, which had been R.I.D. and had been Transformers and had been the, everything in John's run. Um, and I finished off Lost Light, which had also been more than meets the eye with James Roberts. So, like, getting to see all of those folks, uh, Marigreed, Jack, Alex, Nick, uh, I'm just saying a bunch of names now, finish their runs <laughs> was really great. And then a couple months later, getting to launch the new ongoing and uh, since getting to work with Anna and Sam and everyone else there, uh, like ending and beginning books really, really do it for me. Those are some extra favorites. Um, and very selfishly, I will also say the Transformers versus the Terminator run that John <laughs> yeah. and I are co-writing because, you know, it's really fun. <laughs> and uh, I'm co-writing it, so. Yeah, what, I, I, you know, I was actually just thinking selfishly of the stuff I was writing. I, I mean, I also was super lucky to get to edit Mer all of Merigrid stuff, uh, edit More Than Meets the Eye. Uh, this, not the, the middle record story. Um, <laughs> So I mean, yeah, I, I got really lucky and got to work with a lot of a lot of great creators in that front too. I, I, I was I wasn't even going down that road. Sorry. <laughs> awesome. Now maybe this one might be a, a, a little easier. What is your favorite scene in any Transformers book? And I guess to make it make it a little more interesting, don't pick one from a book that you are on. <laughs> <laughs> Start with you, uh, Anna. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> okay. I think my all-time favorite scene was Chaos Theory, Optimus bursting into the Senate, and Josh and out that wonderful speech. And it was like such a brilliant moment. <laughs> and I know we can't absolutely top that, but we are going to have our own Senate, Senate uh, scene spin that's like very different, but also in some ways reminiscent of it. So, yeah. <laughs> I was literally gonna say chaos theory. That's so funny. <laughs> I, for me, it's that whole moment with like Optimus and Megatron just like talking it out, like just like letting out like years of like things they should have been talking about in therapy probably for like a really long time before that. I don't know, it's just Transformers books are so often, it's like all action all the time, which is great and super fun, but Something about that, like, really, like, I don't want to say human, but, like, character-driven, like, quiet moment between the two of them is very strong for me. I like that. I'm, like, a big character person, so, yeah. I remember. <laughs> One more for me is Tarantulas bursting out of the mm. Roll head. That was, that was perfect. <laughs> Seems that the record's like, I have on the over here. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, it was such a genuinely fun and terrifying moment. Um, God, I love it. <laughs> Nick is a wonderful bastard, so I'm sorry for my language. <laughs> like, uh, uh, I think I'm going to have to go old, older school. I mean, I, I, like, I actually, I, I do remember when I, when I was coming on, like, reading Chaos Theory. Like, I don't think, I think I read Chaos Theory before it came out, like, because I was pitching on the stuff. So I, I, I had that chance. But, like, the, the one that really sticks with me, uh, is when Ratchet and Megatron got fused together mm. in the Simon Furman uh, Transformers yes. run. That was they, like that was literally the moment that I was talking about earlier, where I was like, "This is awesome." If I was eight, this would have been the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I can't believe they can do that with you know you, you couldn't do that with other comic book characters because no one would let you do that in a children's comic. Yeah. Uh, but they're metal, so it's okay to do terrible things to them. And I think I've learned that lesson <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, geez. The first one that came to mind was way back when IDW did a adaptation of the animated movie. And there are like yeah. two or three pages that are just extra stuff that wasn't in the movie. Like, uh, they go back to the arc for a second, and you feel like Omega Supreme and some of the Decepticon combiners, like, punching it out as a, here's where they were during that. And I just love that stuff, because, I don't know, it's important to me. <laughs> nice. All right, now this one, David, you can also answer this question. So you, Yay! You're, you're back on the board. All right, here we go. <laughs> so I know, I know there's been lots of different crossovers for, for Transformers. What would be 
your dream crossover that hasn't happened yet. So like for me, it would be fusing or having a Transformers crossover with Common Rider, and mm. not not just because both of those are my brands, but because I would <laughs> genuinely like to see see that happen. So starting with you, David. Here you go. You're back on the board. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, back on the board. Uh, I mean, I would be silly if I didn't mention something. If we could ever do something with Gundam, you know, Transformers <laughs> versus Gundam, you know, that would be. A, a huge, huge clash, but I really like the fun stuff, you know, like the My Little Pony stuff or like the Ghostbuster stuff. You know, I, I skew more like fun with my crossovers. Like, if I, I, I like the main books to be serious when you know, they can be fun as well, but when I see my crossovers, like the goofier, the better, you know, like like Star Trek versus and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, I would probably lean goofier, um, you know, the My Little Pony uh, and Ghostbusters are the first two that come to mind that I just am in love with. <laughs> Awesome. I think I have like top three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I hope David is taking notes because I would absolutely love to not only draw that, but like, I don't know, covers, anything, just <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> design, like a tiny detail in the background, but like Transformers versus Go Gojira. Like that's mm -hmm. a pretty obvious thing. Teenage Mutant Ninja Transformers. Make it happen. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. There is power there. Like it's yeah. absolutely obvious thing, but like it, it has uh, such a capacity for greatness and an absolute mm -hmm. bonkers fun, and also Dungeons and Dragons and Transformers. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah. oh. Okay. D D, &D uh, Transformers is a hundred percent mine because yeah. they're like they're such like disparate universes that i just feel like any machine in D, &D people are going to be like what's going on and then yeah. the transfer yeah. like it's just it's there's a lot of potential for like a mm -hmm. good robot dragon uh story which is always something story. that i think we need more of i also, also really yeah oh please yeah, yeah no go ahead <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say, also, because I'm such a big Beast Wars fan, I would love to do, like, reboot and Beast Wars. I always wanted Ooh, to be, like, yes, those two things. Be cool. one, because I am, like, reboot is, like, my first love. And, I mean, they were made by the same TV production company. Like, there's no reason that that should not happen. I don't know who has the rights to reboot anymore, but it, sh <laughs> it should be us. <laughs> 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 but D&D &D for sure. Yeah, Anna, please finish, sorry. <laughs> I like, like the idea uh, of the mental exercise of trying to figure out what class each Transformer would be in. Like, you know, who's, yeah, who's yeah, the mage? Yeah, who's yeah, the barbarian? Yeah. Optimus Prime is Warlock. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's like the the I don't, like, come on. He has like- Optimus so Prime is a paladin for me. <laughs> Uh, Paladin doesn't really work like class wise. Sound <laughs> is, is a total druid. <laughs> like, <laughs> and also, uh, there's like a perfect uh, polymorph thing that you can integrate into the whole uh, transformation thing. Just like, it's there. Like, you can just like take it and go with it. <laughs> <sighs> uh, I, 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 I like the goofy ones a lot too. But the one, one other one that had come up, I mean, like not come up as like a real thing, but come up as a thing that we we were we were talking about. That I would be open if anybody wanted to do it. Would be Transformers Alien. Uh, I think that would be a. I think the the biomechanics of Alien meeting the mechanic mechanics of Transformers could be really interesting. And I do um, that. Yeah, seeing what a what a what what happens if you inject an alien into a into a, a Cybertronian like because they they kind of mutate differently depending on what um, what creature they're inside of. It's kind of reminiscent a bit of uh, Rom versus Transformers, which was yeah. an absolutely gorgeous book. Yeah. Probably no today. coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a beautiful one. Alex did a good job. Um, this one's for the Canadian fans like Sam, uh, Beasties Boys, Transformers Meet the Beasties Boys. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a day one purchase for me right there. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> those, those we, had a lot of fun, yeah, we had a lot of fun comments, you know, so, uh, Power Rangers, uh, Hello Kitty, GoBots, Go you know. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I think, you know, crossover. San, uh, Sanrio Transformers crossover is very good. That's a very good concept right there. But we, right. I feel like instead of trying to, like, 
we would have to put all the Transformers into, like, the tra Sanrio style. Like, when they came through, they would be transformed into, like, the very kawaii versions of themselves. <laughs> like, very soft. Mm -hmm. That would be great. <laughs> That's awesome. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, those, those are some pretty good choices. When you said, trans or when you said Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I really thought of Shredder as a Decepticon and his vehicle mode being just like a shredder, like a paper shredder. <laughs> 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 so, that I, I, I would pay, I would pay money for that figure. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, like functional, it would have to be yeah, functional. functional. Like, like, yeah, functional yeah. shredder mm -hmm. transforms into shredder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so you know. One question that people always want to ask when they have a chance to talk with anybody who's in the comic industry is the inevitable, how do I get where you are? How do I get into comics professionally? Um, so if you guys can just speak to a little bit of, you know, your journey into, you know, being a normie and then being in the industry as a comic god, you know, that'd be great. So, uh, Anna, if you could start us off. <laughs> I mean, I just tweeted and did it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much it. But like um, for a very long while, I was like, yeah, comics are done by amazing people and I would never be on that level. And honestly, I still think that I have very, very long road to go until I like actually do the stuff uh, that's like uh, on the perfect level, on the level I really wanted to do because uh, there's been so many amazing creators before me and it's like, it feels a lot like walking among giants and then like, I've been admiring Alex and Nick's and Andrew's and uh, Kay's art for years. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm supposed to live up to all that. Oh my God, that's a lot of pressure. But uh, the journey itself has been relatively easy. I just wrote uh, David uh, when um, the previous continuity has been wrapping up. And I was like, hey, if I can help in any capacity, I would love to try. And actually, the first thing I tried, I did some variants for non transformative things to gosh, the gosh the feel of what I'm actually capable to do. Uh, but I ended up working on Transformers and <laughs> I still try not to think a lot about it, but I also absolutely overthink every, over, overthink every tiny thing I put in the book. <laughs> so yeah, more or less like that. Nice, you heard it here. Just just DM David and uh, you get a job. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Rip to your, uh, your DMs aren't over right now. <laughs> Like, hey, I gotta go adjust my Twitter real quick. So. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be a lot of sliding into your DMs there, David. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Sam? Yeah. Uh, oh, I was. This is one of the ones where we're all in the same place on each other's screens. That's magic. You never know. I never know. Uh, for me, I mean, Twitter is a great tool for networking. I totally agree with that. But uh, if you want to write comics, the thing that you have to have is already having written something, you need to be able to show people that you can not only write and an example of your writing style and what you bring to the table and your sort of specific voice and vision, but also to show people that you can complete something. Um, a lot of people start something and never finish it and can never have like a finished product that they can use as part of like a portfolio. And I'm not talking about having something professionally published, there's never been a better time if you want to create a comic uh, as a writer or an artist to make a comic. There, it used to be you had to know somebody who knew somebody and probably look like that person a little bit and like be friends with their friends and get into a traditional publisher. Um, those barriers to entry don't really exist anymore. You can create whatever you want and put it on Tumblr, on Instagram, on Twitter, on your own website, like you can self-publish. Um, and some of the greatest creators, I think, of our, our time have come out of self-publishing in that way. So I would say write something if you're a writer artist, you know, make something and put it online. Or if you're just a writer, find someone to collaborate with. A big part of making comics is collaborating, you know, with an editor, um, but also with your artist and, you know, kind of co-creating something together. So find an artist who maybe is not interested in, like, writing something themselves or wants to sort of be part of the creation process but then we'll leave the scripts to you and do the art and that part of the story themselves so find someone to collaborate with and put something online because no one will ever know what you are writing looks like and what your unique 
perspective is unless you're able to show it to them. And we all have a really important, unique perspective to share. So I just encourage people all the time to, to make something, finish it, and then publish it. Put it on Twitter, uh, send it to your peers, send it to people you admire, you know, like put it, put your, you have to put yourself out there, even though it's horrifying. I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, just make something. Yeah. I'd say what, like one of the, um, one of the hardest things, like if it's something like where you want to come in and you want to write Transformers, writing a pitch for Transformers and sending it to like an editor or a Transformers writer is a not a real good way to do that. I mean, one of the ways, one of the things is like that just, like I'm not going to look at it because I don't want to be, I don't want to create the impression of us taking an idea that you had and then doing it. Like there's definitely been cases where that's, I mean, I, I, I've seen things you would never believe weren't stolen from pitches other than we could walk over to a filing cabinet and show the person pitching it that we already had stuff made. Uh, they have an, an amazing story about Marvel's Civil War that would just be the most unbelievable thing if it wasn't true. Um, that we couldn't demonstrate to people how true it was like, at that moment. Um, but so, like, but it's also, even if you were pitching that story, there's so much that can go wrong with it because there's plans for what we're doing with Transformers, what Hasbro is doing with Transformers and all that stuff. So I 100% agree with what Sam said about going out there and, and you know, getting your voice out there. I mean, for me, I, I, when I started, I was doing web comics. Um, I, I was self-publishing some stuff uh, unsuccessfully. Like, that's how I knew Brendan is that we met through comics and then we did a comic together. Um, you know, so when you do that kind of stuff, you will meet people who are also doing it and that's mm -hmm. that I mean that sort of net networking happens naturally and, and uh, um, getting that stuff out there like it, it, um, like I feel like this dates myself but like when, like when I started doing web comics there just weren't that many um, mm -hmm. you know and and now there's like a, I think a, like an infinite number of them so it's, it is hard to get noticed but that can happen um, if you do start talking to you know like a, an editor or something if that's the route you want to go um, keep sending them updates. I mean, that's something that I'd recommend, unless somebody tells you not to. But don't send the same stuff over and over again, but when you do new stuff, you know, say, hey, here's some new stuff. Don't expect a response, but sometime you can increase your, like a lot of luck gets involved, but you can increase your luck by being good and being around frequently enough that you might be in the right place at the right time for somebody to, 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 to say that, or to say that this is the, the, the thing we need. Um, the other thing is, though, is that there's so many more and different and uh, changing opportunities. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people that are kind of coming out and getting really good graphic novel deals um, that would be of an unthinkable style in, in 10 years ago. You know, the, the, there's somebody kind of, you know, the, the, so there, there, there are other avenues to, to reach out to that might be right for you, depending on what you want to do with comics, you know, um, and I encourage everybody to do the thing that's most right for them. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah. My, my, my route was making web comics, and then I actually, I, I wound up moving to New York and applying for like any job that sounded remotely interesting. And I applied for a job at Marvel, and I literally forgot about it, and then got a call from Bill Jemis um, to the point that I had to like go back onto my computer and look and find a cover letter because I'd forgotten that I'd done it, and I thought it was my friends messing with me. Um, <laughs> And so that's why I wound up in editorial was just applying for a job that I saw online. I think it's a little different now, um, just because I mean the way you play, like you know, like, like now there's you know it's not finding just like a random job listing. It's going onto the Disney, uh, you know, if you want to get a, if you want to get a job as an assistant editor at Marvel, it would be going onto the Disney job system and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I, David. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to get into comics like I did, then I recommend nepotism. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, uh, no, I think what Sam and John and Anna have all said is really good. You know, it's a matter of putting in work to, like, just make comics on your own time and, you know, figuring out, I think a lot of this early part two is figuring out what you're comfortable with, you know, going, if you're an artist going through and like, figuring out can I actually draw transformers can I draw people can I draw horses whatever uh -huh. um, and if you're a writer figuring out what sort of pacing you're good with and what you like writing um, and then putting that work out there until it you know eventually finds the right person at the right time and 
you know, that doesn't necessarily mean finding someone to like pick up your book and give you an ongoing series and let you write uh, Transformers D&D, for example. But uh, <laughs> sometimes it just means finding the right person who has 20 bucks and wants to buy your self-published thing. And hey, uh -huh. you're now being paid for writing comics. So, yeah. So yeah, thing, actually. Like, oh, good. Sorry. <laughs> No, go ahead, John. No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, I actually completely forgot that I started my own webcomic and did like a chapter and a half of it before actually like writing David. <laughs> I've been like too engrossed in Transformers that I forgot that I did stuff before that. <laughs> so yeah, like first thing you have to do is figure out uh, what you're capable of, uh, what you're interested in doing on a regular basis, on a tight schedule, uh, day after day. Like uh, even if you're completely tired and emotionally drained, you still have to show up and like uh, deliver. <laughs> it's a job. That, yeah, yeah. Hmm? The other thing, like, ask yourself: Have you created a hit TV show? Because if you have, that's going to give you an advantage, and you should <laughs> use that. Um, but uh, uh, no, but uh, like uh, joking about that aside, though, too. Like this, is, like the world now, people will like for artists. It's kind of, it is different. It's harder to do the art, I think, but it's easier to get that in front of somebody and have them look at it and say yes or no. Uh -huh. I know there. Are, I mean, I, I'm saying that. And there's probably some people that have been sending me stuff for years. Uh, um, uh, uh, the, 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 John Dell, I'm thinking of you. Uh, that are are really good, and that it hasn't that hasn't you know fit in the right place yet. But um, uh, you know, so it's not always like super easy. I don't mean that it's not easy. Um, but you can at least look at an art, a piece of art, and know it. But the other thing with a, with a writer, if you don't have an artist, there are a lot of other mediums you can work in. Like uh, mm -hmm. I, like uh, uh, I mean, Greg Pox, a great you know comic book writer, but he he got he got noticed because he'd made a, a, a short film. Not that that's easy to do, but that's easier to do now than it was. 20 years ago, you know, like you, like you um, so. No, that's definitely true. And I, I feel like to spin off of that, I got my first opportunity at IDW when our, your previous editor in chief emailed me to ask me if I wanted to try my hand at a 10 page short comic for, or if I wanted to pitch on a 10 page short comic for Star Trek was the first comic I had done. But I only was offered that opportunity to learn how to make comics because I had already published two books like with mm -hmm. Random House and I worked at a AAA video game studio as a writer. So like I had already done a significant amount of writing as a professional writer before getting that opportunity to try my hat hand at comics. So. Yeah, it's it's like a tough thing because I when people are like, how do you do this? It's like I did so much other stuff in writing first. So it is kind of like what David was saying. It's that combination of hard work that makes you lucky, basically, because it puts you out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I was mostly joking about the nepotism thing. For those who don't know, uh, my dad worked in comics for a long time. He was actually the first editor in chief at IDW. So I didn't know that. Yeah, so I had some. That's wild. Well. You're a rich boy. I only knew your mom. That's <laughs> yeah. bananas. David's mom, mom also used to run like my favorite comic book store, which is like amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mysterious Galaxy. If you've ever bought a book at San Diego Comic Con, you probably bought it from them, um, which is excellent. So yeah, I I have that, but I got my job at IDW because I had been working in newspaper editorial mm. uh, prior. So yeah, like. That was a place where I got to do some writing and do a lot of editing, and it turned out well for uh, making comics. Nice. What so, medium are you going to kill next, David? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm so, so what, I, what I'm hearing, uh, our, our David, is that if, if me, you, and Justin work together on an Optimus pitch, <laughs> just keep sending it to them, we can do a Bluefin IDW comic book. That's what I'm hearing Perfect. right now. I'm ready. We're all writers, you know. We're all professional writers. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll send that pitch out. Awesome. Now, yeah, before we go, uh, just one last question for you guys is: as far as you're allowed to tell us, what's next for IW Transformers? Aside uh, from Optimus. Yeah. Do you guys want me to feel this one? Because. I got a schedule in front of me. Uh, <laughs> no, it, in a very literal sense, My Little Pony Transformers number two and Transformers 84 Secrets and Lies number three are on sale Wednesday. Uh, Buy it. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
like Anna said, we have the double length Transformers number 25 uh, coming out in November. We have a couple more issues in between now and then that are uh, coming out too. If you haven't checked out our ongoing series, uh, I recommend, you know, taking the time to get caught up. Uh, I hear that there's a promo code involved, so you can get a discount on the IDW site if you want to order some back issues. Yo, um, my yeah. little pony is available on here right now. See? That's adorable. Um, <laughs> so It's pretty hilarious, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so definitely, you know, check out the stuff that's going on, but uh, you wanna, you're gonna wanna see Transformers 25, uh, Anna and Brian, put together something really amazing there. Um, we have a bunch of ongoing stuff still going. So uh, Transformers Galaxies, I think issue eight is out now and issue nine will be out soon, which is Sam's last issue. And then there's a three part Ultra Magnus arc coming from Brandon Easton, Andrew Griffith and Josh Burcham, which is really exciting. Um, there's still an issue of Transformers 84 after this Wednesday. There's still an issue of Transformers versus the Terminator. Um, there's still some other issues of Transformers MLP to come out. Uh, in October, we're launching Transformers Back to the Future uh, with Kevin Scott, Juan Samu, and David Garcia Cruz, yet another David. Um, <laughs> so that's going to be really exciting, featuring the new character Gigawatt, who uh, transforms into a time machine, which is pretty sick. Um, and then we have other Transformers stuff ahead that I don't know that we can talk about just yet, but... Uh, <laughs> Catch me have... emailing David every single day, being like, "Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> is this ready? Are we doing this?" <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming on. This, this was a whole lot of fun. Uh, you know, for everybody out there, uh, don't forget. You know, we do have our Flame Toys sale where you, you can get some of our Transformers model kits. Uh, don't forget to join us later on uh, today at 1 p.m. Uh, we'll be having a War for Cybertron panel with the voice of Megatron from the Netflix series, so that's going to be pretty fire. Um, yeah. Definitely come by for that. And, of course, don't forget, go buy Transformers My Little Pony on the IDW site. Uh, make sure, let me bring this up again. Use code Ooh. Galvatron. Code Galvatron. Ooh. Get a 30% discount. Just buy, buy the whole run for My Little Pony. I'm, that's what I'm, I'm about to do. That, 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 that Grimlock on there is just, that's <laughs> I, I, need, much. I gotta get it. I need I need a figure of that in that exact style. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming on. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, expect to see some Optimus pitches sent your way by the Blue team. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay. for having us. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Great. See you later.